Christy here, and I just wanted to pop on really quickly, or I'll try to keep it quick, um, to share with you some things that I've learned about uh, my print and cut labels since doing my last tutorial. One of my major complaints or problems, I guess, in doing the labels uh, last time was that I wasn't able to ungroup or release compound path so that I could select the labels that I really wanted to use. Um, some of the labels just weren't my style or I just didn't think that I would use them. Um, so. I kind of made a comment that I didn't really know how to get rid of those ones uh, easily. A lot of my viewers said, you know, just click ungroup or click release compound path. So I definitely tried both of those options and it just didn't work. I went on YouTube trying to find tutorials that would help me and nothing really fit the files that I was using. So it definitely will work. The ungroup option and the release compound path option definitely works for certain file types. But because I was using the freebies from uh, Caitlin Schaefer and they didn't work, I wanted to pop on here and just show you uh, how I did make it work. So uh, if you haven't yet seen my other tutorial, I will link that in the description box below but uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about <laughs> check that video out um, and I'm just gonna give you a really quick rundown uh, so you go to CaitlinSchaefer.com slash downloads she has all these different um, freebie printables that you could print and fussy cut out by hand but I did do a tutorial on how to use your silhouette machine to do the print and cut um, so you just want to select the one that you want and uh, download it so I just did that by clicking on it and I'm gonna do the wood crane one I'm currently working on uh, mini album for my husband's family they're celebrating 50 years in Canada and having a big anniversary party so I uh, volunteered to make a scrapbook for that or a mini album for that and I want to make it really easy for myself so I'm gonna do a lot of the journaling on these labels so because the collection that I'm using uh, has lots of wood grain and uh, neutral tones, I'm opting to use the wood grain labels. So I'm just going to um, download that. It down downloads as a zip. So you open that up and it gives you the PDF option and the PNG option. And you want the PNG and you just kind of drag and drop that into your Silhouette software. And it will look something like this. Now... Um, from here you want to select your, or, yeah, select your page settings. So it's just this icon up here with the arrows and select it, um, as a letter. I'm printing as a letter, so I want to select that. Uh, and then I want to turn on my registration marks or my, uh, where I'm able to cut so I just go right next door to this icon with the markings in each uh, corner and I'm going to go to style and select my uh, machine type. I have a Cameo so I'm going to select type 1. Most likely you are also going to select type 1 unless you have something different and just make it a habit to click restore defaults. That just ensures that everything is how it should be and uh, nothing has gotten changed or anything and uh, so previously in my last tutorial I was making things fit by minimizing my image and erasing um, labels that were in the hash marks because you definitely want to ensure that nothing is overlapping in these hash marks whether it is writing or an image or anything just keep that clear so I was uh, erasing those because you will notice that if I do go to ungroup, uh, which I can have, there's these icons in the bottom left hand corner uh, that say group selected shapes or ungroup, or if you right click group ungroup, you'll notice that it does not come up as an option, so I am unable to do that. Another suggestion was made to select release compound path. So if you select your image, which I have, and then select release compound path, 
what should happen is that all these labels become independent of the main image and you can see that 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 has not happened so both those do not work so my kind of uh, run around getting uh, getting uh, getting these images separate from one another uh, is to use the cutting tool or the knife um, it's the easiest way that I found to do it so I'm just going to quickly show you that um, and I won't make you watch me do it all but I just really wanted to show you really quickly um, because for the album that I'm working on I only want to use again just to make it simple I only want to use uh, these rectangular labels just so it has more of a cohesive look so what you do is you just cut around um, essentially you have a knife and you're just cutting out the piece that you want so that didn't work <laughs> I love that. So I'm going to try again here. Um, like I said last video, I am just learning how to uh, work my silhouette myself. So by no means is this going to be perfect. I just really want to um, help people um, who are also learning how to use their machine uh, and hopefully just show them like the possibilities that they can do different things so you just cut around what you want and then you click the select button and see like <laughs> struggling um, I think sometimes I know like if you go if you cut off the page then or out of these cut lines even maybe it just doesn't register so there we go so you might want to be mindful of that so yeah just select everything that you want sometimes you only need to make um, one cut mark or knife one mark sorry one line with your knife depending on um, your image so if I'll just really quickly show you like if you wanted to get rid of this um, bottom part you could just go like this and that's cut off so depending where your image lays um, yeah okay so let me finish cutting these out and then I'll get you to the next step all right, now that I have all my images cut, I'm going to get rid of everything that I do not want. So there's definitely labels here that I could um, keep and use, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to get rid of them. So I do really like these guys because they're a little bit smaller, but I'm just gonna get rid of them. So I'm gonna select my image and click delete. Now I have a clean page. Um, some of these labels, instead of using the straight edge, I use the freehand, so that's also an option um, to make sure that you get um, the labels or the items or images that you want. So now I'm just going to place them onto my page. Uh, I'm going to try and play Tetris a little bit here and get things to fit as closely as possible. Again, keeping in mind that nothing is in those hash marks so I'm going to put that there and I might put this up here just slide that in really close and I'm going to copy that and paste it so that oh I thought it would fit this one will fit so that it fits up there and you'll notice I didn't do a very good job cutting this one out, so um, some of my image, if I go over, is lost. Uh, we can get around that by using the layers function. So I'm going to just bring this to the front so that it sits in front of this one. And then I'm going to just continue piecing this together. So again, just rotating and just playing around with what's going to make the, make the items fit uh, the best way possible. 
So again, you can see that that one I didn't cut very well. So I'm going to again play around with the layers and just bring to front. So now I have all of those. I might bring these ones down a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to select them and I'm going to group them. And now I'm going to copy and paste. So I have all of those again. And I'm going to rotate this just so that it fits a little bit nicer. And I still have tons of room. So I'm going to paste again. And again, I'm just going to play around with what's going to fit here. All right, so you can see that I've pieced all the labels together. I have 34 labels on this sheet, which is amazing because I know I will use all of them, and I'm so excited about this. So just to finish it off, I'm going to go to my open trace window. So actually, I'm going to group all of these just so they don't shift. So just drawing a huge box around all of them and go group selected shapes. Now I'm going to go select trace area. Again, drawing a big box around everything. And you can see that only some of the items or labels have been highlighted yellow. So to fix that, because I want all of my labels to be cut or have cut lines around them, so that I can load it into my machine and have the machine cut out the labels. I'm going to go to the scale button and just play around with that until I see that all the labels have been highlighted. Uh, and then I, it looks pretty good right now, but you can go to your threshold and just what you're looking for is that there's a nice solid yellow line around each one of your labels. So you can do that here on the on the scale or you can click the up and down arrows to change the percentage. So it looks pretty good to me and uh, some of my labels have an inner line just for detail uh, that's being highlighted right now. So if I was to click trace that line would show up as a cut line as well and I don't want that. So I'm going to go trace outer edge. I only want the outside to be highlighted and I can see that that's a problem already. Okay, trace select, select trace area, scale. I'm going to try by selecting this. Someone also mentioned this high pass filter. I don't know if this is going to work. outer edge yay it worked okay so I do see some problem areas but definitely not as bad as it was so I just move that off to the side you can see that there is some um, multiple red lines here so I'm just gonna zoom in here and use my eraser and get rid of those and I'll come back so I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm going to line this all back up. And I think there's a way. Let's group this. I think there's a way to align this. Possibly. Align. Center middle. So that's lined up. And now I can place it back onto my. paper and it doesn't really look lined up does it so I'm just going to line it up as best I can and any this is going to be a thousand times better than if I was to do it with scissors right all right so from here I would save it as PDF and save it as um, my Studio 3 file. Send this away to get printed. And we're good to go. 
So thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. I don't know if it was, but uh, thank you for all your comments and suggestions. I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye!